Let's change gears a little bit and talk about interpretation in environmental education. Sure. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just read this question verbatim. I'd like to know where Brent views the importance of interpreters in environmental education and the planning of state parks in the future. Programming is often how we catch and retain new visitors, and if this gets pushed to the side, we will lose some great opportunities to attract new people to our parks and the outdoors. Comments? Yeah, I have comments, and, and uh, they were, they're basically this. I had, I had the privilege of, of meeting with our interpretive uh, team and, uh, up at the Canyon of the Eagles just last week, and uh, uh, I used to be an interpreter in parks. I still consider myself an interpreter in parks, and, um, and I hope our, all of our employees do because we have a role. It's an important role, and it's, a, it's an important role to, uh, to not only the visitors that are coming today, because it enhances their experience, enriches their experience in state parks, provides uh, uh, added value to, to their camping trip or their visit to a historic site or, or state park. But, but more importantly, probably, uh, uh, w one of the critical uh, objectives uh, of any interpretive program is to build stewardship values in our visitors and that they will take those values then and, and apply them in their lives and in the resources that they encounter throughout their life. And uh, am I committed to it? Absolutely. And I absolutely think it's a core part of what we do. Uh, so I hope this leaves any concerns that any of our interpreters might have because in, in a difficult budget time where we're, we're setting priorities, uh, this is one of my priorities. And uh, it, it's uh, certainly something we need to preserve and do well. Here's another question about uh, prioritizing this time regarding support functions. When it comes to the headquarters support team, setting priorities and sticking to them is a challenge. How can we set common priorities for supporting state parks? Through planning. Um, your agency has a strategic plan and we use the land and water plan and we've, we've, we've used that as a springboard for each of our divisions to develop division operating plans. And I was involved in this process and led a team of, the, of a very diverse team, a cross section of our division, to help us determine how do we operationalize the land and water plan. What what is it that we specifically need to do, to uh, to accomplish that vision that's created in that plan? And so, in the division's operating plan, which was implemented just a couple of months ago, uh, we've set priorities, and those priorities include all of our support programs, and their work. And so. Uh, when we speak about support programs, they exist because they're very important. Every one of them are important. If we were to remove one support program, and in state parks we have many, and our natural, cult, natural and cultural resource programs, and our, our law enforcement program, our interpretation, uh, budget management, you, you remove any one of those and we're not complete. They're, we're just not complete, not able to accomplish the mission like we need to. So. Uh, Naturally, there's going to be different things, different priorities from year to year. That's what that operating plan is intended to be. And uh, I, uh, my, my intent is that we take that division's operating plan and we drive it down into even further detail on the site-by-site -site operating plans to be developed. And, and it, will, it will be, I, I know that's a little bit, it could be frightening to some people, think there's a big task ahead, but uh, it will be in a template form and, and it's going to be very consistent uh, with our operating plan from the division, which will be consistent with the agency's plan, and it will uh, it will establish our priorities, and uh, and uh, I think it will do it well. Um, of course, we spent the day just yesterday at Bastrop Report. State Park, where you could really see evidence of the increasing interface between infrastructure and state parks. I mean, now more than ever, with the bond dollars being spent, there's a lot of. Um, sure interaction there. Here's a question about improving communications and cooperation. And the question is, how can we improve communication and cooperation, particularly between region staff in the field and supervisors in Austin? And this question goes on to talk about that program staff are located in headquarters, some are located in the regions, and that a uh, apparently there haven't been joint program meetings or joint program operations meeting in recent times. Okay. How can we improve that kind of communication? Sure. Well, I think it starts with a relationship between me and Rich, for one. Uh, uh, we need to understand each other's roles and how, how uh, we overlap. Uh, the relationship between infrastructure and state parks is, is, is uh, enormous. It's important. Uh, 
we're, we're clearly, we have most of the facilities and the infrastructure within the agency, and so naturally a lot of their work is going to be in, in state parks. So the communication has got to be outstanding. So when it comes to meetings like this, we absolutely have to be at the table. And if, and if uh, you know, when you look at the life of a capital project in state parks, it, it, it touches many different positions, not just the superintendent of the site or the facility manager from that program here in Austin. Uh, it, it essentially touches every part of our mission and so those facilities support us in accomplishing each of those aspects so uh, one of the things that I think is so important to make sure that communication exists for example natural and cultural resources are involved on the front end of a project in its planning and at the time that the charter is developed for a project the project is scoped and uh, at that time, and all the constraints for that project are identified. Well, naturally, our resources are going to be one of the constraints that we have to work around, uh, as is uh, 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 interpretation and many other uh, parts of our mission that we're trying to accomplish with the facilities. So uh, to ensure that that is happening, we need to engage each of those stakeholders, those critical pieces of state parks in the charter stage. And uh, that's where we engage them. We can't bring them two-thirds of the way into a project and they discover that there's problems. We've wasted resources and planning and design, and we might have to change direction. So, um, Will that be a change over the way it has been in the past? It, it, it's a slight change. Um, it, I think that we've had examples where it didn't work quite as effectively. Now, I know that there has been a team, that's a joint team and effort between state parks and infrastructure to streamline, identify ways that we can look at a process a project review for a, for a project uh, more efficiently, more effectively. Uh, I have not seen the recommendations from that team, but I'm anxious to see them and, and if we're all in agreement that I'm ready to implement and we move forward, but we all have to be at the table obviously at the same time. Of course, we're all aware of the headlines about the state budget deficit and yeah. here's a question about potential budget cuts. Sure. Um, I would like to know how Brent plans to handle what I perceive to be hard times ahead for state parks. It's important that we all know and that we all have concern. Uh, I don't want us to, to be overwhelmed by the fact uh, of something that might happen. Uh, to the extent that we can, we can take that concern and focus it in areas that I think are to our advantage. And one is to communicate the message in our, in our uh, communities and with our constituents the value that, uh, of state parks in their lives and in their economy uh, in so many different ways uh, state parks are valuable to Texans and, and oftentimes they may not know it and so it's important that we message that and, and we get that out consistently. As it relates to the budget and as we move into the session obviously this is my first session uh, in this role but uh, you know, I'm going to depend on the experience of uh, a very capable executive office that we have here to help help guide me in that. But uh, but I will say that we have a lot of partners throughout this state and a lot of people that are very committed to state parks, and we need to engage them, and uh, we need to keep them aware. One of the things that we can do to position ourselves best in any difficult situation like this is to prepare, and so we. We're going through, this is a relatively new process that we've, we've just begun in the last couple of weeks. But we're, we're assessing our operations and how effective are we at achieving our mission and all aspects of our mission at every one of our sites. We want to maximize that and, uh, and through that, where we have needs, we're going to set priorities related to budget. And this is how we're going to determine how we allocate funds. Whether it's more or less, we need to have priorities and we need to have a good assessment of where we are in our inventory right now and where the gaps exist and where we need to do better, where we have opportunities to do better. Um, having said all that, uh, uh, the LBB is, is, you know, uh, uh, we had several requests yesterday. These, these requests are coming in almost on a daily basis for information as, uh, as they look uh, closely at our budgets, particularly in state parks, and try to determine is there room for savings and is there any any steps that we can take internally to realize some of the savings. A 21 billion dollar shortfall is a lot of money to make up and we know that we're going to be expected to do our part but we don't want to lose sight of our mission and our mission includes 
other things besides whether a park is profitable or certainly it, the, to the extent that it recovers its costs. We have conservation values that we want to uphold. We have, we have uh, 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 interpretive and education programs and recreation that we want to provide at a very high quality level. And so we're going to be committed to doing that with the resources that we have and to uh, one, one different approach that we're going to take now than what has been done in the past is rather than dilute the entire system and basically bleeding ourselves out because we've cut in equally across the board. We're going to be more strategic with the way we, we make our, uh, identify our opportunities to save funds and, uh, and maximize our ability to achieve the mission. Well, as I mentioned, there were many other questions from staff, and we're going to do our best to get them all answered and get them up on Wildnet. Wild uh, till then, is there anything you'd like to add or say to staff? Well, I, I, just this, and that is, I've spent almost three decades in this industry, specifically in this agency and in this department. And uh, it's been a very rewarding career. Uh, I've formed a lot of friendships. Of uh, friendships that will last a lifetime, and I and, and I'm so thankful. I'm privileged to be in the job. Um, uh, I, I I feel like I have the confidence of of staff. They've encouraged me in so many different ways, and continue to do that. And I appreciate it. My charge for all of our supervisors, all of our team leaders, our management team throughout state parks is is uh, is to do the same for our and support our folks in the field and in our support programs in Austin. Um, I want to create an environment where everybody loves their job. They may not be making as much as, as the attorney downtown. They may not be, uh, uh, th but there are so many other things in our job that we can take note and realize what a blessing it is to have all of these things, this work environment and this team to work with. Uh, I want us to have an open, and uh, communication with one another that we can talk frankly and leave friends at the end of the day and solve problems together. Uh, utilize uh, the good ideas that exist in the minds of all of our staff. That's what I'm committed to. It's the environment that I want to create. Uh, it's the culture that I think exists now, but we can build upon it. And we've had good leadership in the past. And uh, so there's not significant change that needs to take place. I just want to continue to build on those successes. And uh, I'm excited for the opportunity, and, and I can't wait to get in the parks. I was in a park just yesterday and the day before that, uh, and uh, uh, that's, where, that's where days are best spent. And uh, I look forward to getting out in the field and meeting more folks. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Brent. Thank you, Lydia.